Hi, I'm Susan from Nasus Miniatures, and today I'm going to teach you an easy way to make realistic miniature books. Okay, to start, you're going to need a few supplies. You're going to need um, a page of book covers. You can put this page together yourself, but this page was a page that I have available in my Etsy shop as a PDF download. So if you wanna make your life more easy, you can just pop over to my Etsy page. I'll put a link below and you can pick up one of a few different PDF downloads. I have um, three different pages of different types of covers, so a lot of variety. And then all you do is print it on regular printer paper in the best quality color setting that your printer will do. Now, when you have your book covers, the next thing you'll want to do is cut them out carefully. And then once you have that done, you will end up with a little um, collection of book covers all ready to go. The next couple items that you'll need will be a piece of white cardstock. And you can do this with um, without this tool here, <laughs> but it's super helpful. This is um, a Fiskars uh, paper cutter blade that just... If you make any amount of books and you can pick one of these up, it's definitely worth the investment. So most of these book covers are about 0.75 inches tall. So what we're going to want to do is cut a strip of paper as wide as the book is high. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So if you're using a book cover that's any other size than this, if you're doing one six scale, like fashion doll Barbie size, um, whatever the height is, just if you're not sure stick it in your little um, your cutter and then see how wide it is this cover and most of the covers in my PDF are almost precisely 0 0.75 inches you can see it right against the line there so that's what we're going to be cutting for the width of our strips of cardstock now you can cut along the long end or the short end of the cardstock. I like cutting along the short end just because it's a little easier to handle when I'm gluing later on. See, this is why I love this. It just makes cutting these strips so much easier. And so we'll just cut a lot of strips like this, six or seven or even less. Once you have your strips cut, you can decide how many you want to put together. What we're gonna be doing is we're going to be making a core. Some of the directions that you find for miniature books, they tell you to use foam core or um, that kind of thing, and that, that's good. But I find the foam core doesn't look like actual pages. I find that as far as non-opening books go, if we're gonna do a solid core, it takes a little extra time, but it's just so much nicer to use the cardstock. We're going to be using this as the core for our books. And so you can pick the the average book spine or um, just one of the book spines. And then if you wrap it around the end, you'll be able to see whether it is the you have too many strips of paper or not enough strips of paper. Um, you'll see that this spine, it works quite well. And so this is good. This is seven strips of cardstock. But like I said, some of the spines are quite small. Here's one with a very small spine. So you might use maybe even three or four strips, but you can always test it before you glue the strips together. Um, you can test and see how many you want for your core. So once you know how many strips you want for the core that you're creating, you just have to glue them one on top of the other. This is a new glue stick because you guys are worth it. I ended up picking up the purple glue sticks um, by accident and I've been using them fairly consistently. It's nice because you can see where the glue is, but it does cause me a little bit of psychological distress. You can see the glue and I'm afraid it won't dry clear. It always does dry clear, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so you want to glue your next strip on top. Now, don't worry if it's not matched up you know, 100%, especially on end to end. If you're gonna concentrate on matching up anything, match up the long edges as close as you can. And so once I get one glued down, I'll actually flip it over. I'm not sure why I do this. There's no real reason for it. I think it just helps to keep everything a little bit straighter as it dries. Don't worry about getting glue all the way to the edges. What you're just trying to do is get them to stay together. It might be handy to keep uh, a paper towel nearby so that if you do end up with glue on the edge, okay. 
So once we have this done, you see that we have this nice, um, it's not dry, you can still see some glue, um, but you have this nice solid core that's going to make up the core of our books. Give this a bit of time to dry. Let's go and make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or scotch on the rocks or whatever it is that you might have as your preferred beverage. Then come back and you can start making your books. Now I made one of these earlier so that I could make sure it was good and dry for this tutorial. So I will bring that one back into the picture. And so here we are, ta-da, all dry. And you can see that um, it's not purple, so <laughs> it does dry clear, I promise. Um, and so what we're going to do first is we're going to pick one end of this and we're actually just going to cut the end off right off the bat just to make sure that what we're looking at is a straight edge for when we start making our book. So thank, this cutting mat is great. It has a line and I can, lines everywhere. And you want to start with, you don't have to press all the way down, just little shallow cuts slowly working your way through the layers of the cardstock. If you don't, if your blade's not directly up and down, you'll end up with things that are slanted. Just takes a little bit of attention and a little bit of practice. And so once we have a nice straight edge, we are ready to make our books now. Stay. So making the core of this is probably the most time consuming part of the process. Um, once we have that made, um, we will be able to make multiple books relatively quickly. So. What you want to do is you want to take your book cover and you want to double check that the spine fits. We know that that one fits because that was our test book. Um, but you will you might have to go through your pile and figure out which ones look good. Um, like I said, I'm a perfectionist, so if the spine doesn't quite fit, I'll set it aside and I'll make a different core of a different size later. And so I just put that book over. I line it up as best as I can so that it looks the way that it will when it's finished. And then I just carefully putting pressure on it lay it down on the mat and then I take a pencil I've done this with pen too pencil is recommended and I just draw a little line right along the edge of the book and then after that I'll take my exacto knife again I don't know what blade what size blade is in this something small as long as it's sharp I don't think it matters too much and I'm gonna cut right to the left of this line I don't know if you can see this line very well so I'm just going to cut right to the left. So kind of a little bit narrower um, than we drew because book covers, they do have a little bit of room where the pages end and the cover continues. And that happens on the top and the bottom and also on the front side. It also means that we don't have that pencil line potentially getting in the way. So I just like to as carefully as possible, just, and again, just nice light pressure especially as we kind of get more confident about where we want that line to be. And then we have our core for our book. So we'll take our purple glue again, and then we're going to be liberal with our glue here. Just go around the edges and stuff. If you want to do this on a piece of scrap paper to keep your mat from getting too gunked up, you can do that. And then we're putting our book in just as we imagined it. I get the spine lined up first. And then while keeping kind of e even pressure on the spine, I just wrap it over and I pinchy, 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 pinchy. Now, if the cover is not exactly where you want it, this is the good thing about the glue stick. I will actually set it down and put pressure on it and just slide the cover around slightly if it's not lined up the way that I want it to be. If it just needs to be a little, bit, little up or down or um, sometimes if it ends up really off, I will push. <laughs> put pressure on the book and slide the cover down this way or the other way. Um, and then if it's not exactly pushed up against the spine, don't worry about it. Don't bother, you know, shoving, you know, shoving the spine flat. Books do have kind of a natural curve. So allow the paper to create that curve and just um, give it a little, little love tap. Um, but don't force, force the spine down against the book. And there you have it. So you can see that that was very easy. Um, what I do now is I actually, because I tend to cut on a bit of a slant, even though I'm trying to cut up and down, um, I will flip it over for the next book and put the pencil line on the back side. And that helps me just sort of keep things a little bit straight. And there you go. So there's already two. And then you just keep, you know, flip it over, you just keep going, keep going, keep going until it gets too short on this end. Now. If you are working with a thin core of cardstock 
and you get part way through making your books and you want to start making some thicker ones, um, I'll show you what I do with that. Um, I'll show you with this one, which is now dry, the one that we did earlier. So um, we would have our cardstock cut on the edge like the other one. And then so imagine we were making books all along on this um, on this piece. What I would do is I would say, oh, I want to make a thick, I want to make thicker books now and I don't want to bother making a whole new core. So what I'll do is I'll actually just trim the other end. And then what I'll do is I'll sort of just eyeball where the middle of this is. And I will cut it with a pair of scissors. Now, remember which side is your good side if it's not obvious. And we're just gonna add a little bit of glue and put the the good end, I'm calling this the cut, the cut end that we did that was all nice against the other tidy edge. And just make sure that that's lined up, especially along the, the spine. Don't worry about this at all, but do your best to line it up on the other edges. You might, after this dries, wanna recut this spine edge so that you can make sure it's nice and straight. But that's basically what I do, and I don't even worry about that the fact that this doesn't match up. I start working from this end, and um, and then so some of it, like some of the antique books especially, I don't know if I have any of those covered here, but some of the antique books have very, very large spines. Uh, here's a pretty good example. Um, so this book, uh, all of a sudden, there. So this is would be 17 strips. <laughs> of paper and there's not a lot of books that are that thick in in at least my pdfs that i have in on etsy but there's a few so if you're going along and you and you have done all of the covers that sort of fit that spine width and you still have your core left you don't have to just set it aside and wait until you make that exact size of book again uh, you can actually do that little trick and make a thicker spine book now i'm also going to show you another trick with back to our original core here. So I'm actually just gonna cut this one because um, I'm sure it's regular sized. But let's pretend um, that this book is shorter. So we end up with our, car our core, but then, uh-oh, um, it's not, the core, the core is too thick, uh, too wide for the book. So what do we do there? Well, what I like to do is I like to line up the cover along the edge the way that I want it to look when I'm done. So I want a little bit of cover protruding past the paper core. And then I'm gonna extra carefully set it down onto the board. And so I'm gonna draw, again, my pencil line down the side like I normally do. But then I'm going to draw another line on the bottom where this overhang is. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line. So now you end up with something that looks like this. And so I cut the long side as normal, and then I will cut the bottom. Again, kind of just a little bit shorter than our pencil line. You always want to air to the inside of the pencil line, if that makes sense. Um, it's always better to have a little less of the core than you were planning than to end up having a little extra and have it sticking out past the cover. And you can always double check before you glue to make sure it's the right size. And look at that, perfect. The right size for that smaller book. So let's say we've made all the books that we wanna make for now. First of all, make sure you put the cap back on your glue. You're going to want to put a little bit of Mod Podge on your books. Now, as we know, most books have a shine to it. So what I use for that is Mod Podge, gloss Mod Podge. You're gonna want your Mod Podge, you're gonna want a paintbrush, and you're gonna want, a some want something that you can set your books on while they're drying. Now, I would recommend using wax paper or, <laughs> as I use, tin foil. We're just gonna want a little bit in here. Not too much on the brush. If you get a little extra, you can tap it on the edge, um, but it's better to go too little than too much. And then we're just gonna do, brush it on the front cover, brush it along the spine, and then flip in the book over. A little more Mod Podge there. Um, we're gonna do the back cover as well. I just make sure that the there's no build up that everything looks nice and smooth and then we're going to lay it down on the tin foil to dry i will move uh 
the books around on the tinfoil to make sure that they're not sticking, that I didn't put it down too quickly and uh, end up getting them stuck to the tinfoil, which will rip the paper off of the cover, just like that, just lay the nut. So as I lay down the next book, I will move the previous book that I did just a little bit to make sure it's not sticking. We have our books all Mod Podged. Well, there you have it. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe for more tutorials because there's definitely going to be more of those. And if you'd like, you can also check out my other social media. The links are below. I'm also quite active on Instagram. And so thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.